experiential marketing should deliver a meaningful benefit to the consumer. When I was in Toronto a few years back, I was blown away in the grocery store when I saw this campaign from Kellogg's. Um, instead of the usual trinket that you get in a cereal box, whether it's a lick-on tattoo or a little decoder ring or whatever, Kellogg's decided to put in 800,000 pedometers into their, into their packages. And the reason was it was part of a program to get kids more active. Um, and moms would buy the cereal and they would give the pedometer to their, to their kids. And every day they would log how many steps they took. And that log would go onto a website and they can track how physically active the kids are. Now, a decoder ring or a lick-on tattoo, whatever the little prizes you would get, costs a penny, if not less. But each decoder, uh, I'm sorry, each pedometer costs about $15 at retail. And they put in 800,000 of them. So I was blown away. I was a new father at the time. I was like, wow, Kellogg really wants me to, to get my kids to be more active. And by doing something as simple as putting a pedometer into a box of cereal really made it experiential. So it used to be a, a toy or whatnot, and now it's about health. And that really resonated with me, and it was a complete success in Canada at the time. Uh, the following campaign sends goosebumps uh, every time I see it. And I think the video that I'm about to show you is going to explain it uh, quite much better than I am. So uh, please bear with me. I live in New England East, and uh, and I have four children, and the floor is five feet of my house, and I lost everything. I'm sitting by my house, which is devastated, and I'm going there every day and cleaning up, watching the military go by, and their trucks and the soldiers, and it's like being in a movie. I live in New Orleans East, and my house had water in it for about uh, three weeks and everything smells like mold, the clean stuff, the dirty stuff, everything. So, uh, uh, you know, we're tackling everything else that I have to tackle and then um, dealing with a two-year-old. That was one of the things in my mind, what am I going to do about all these clothes and what am I going to have time? Because I had nowhere else to wash my clothes. In some cases, these people have lost everything and they're living with friends and families or in the FEMA trailers or in their cars. Um, trying to rebuild their lives. We brought a mobile facility down to the New Orleans area so that we can clean the clothes for the folks that live over here. We're doing a free laundry service where we're washing, drying, and folding clothes. And they drop them off and they get them back clean the next day. They maybe arrived back in town or came out of one of the shelters with just a two or three sets of clothing, four sets of clothing. There was no opportunity to wash unless they could find a laundromat, and how do they get there? And are there laundromats? Not in their neighborhoods. There are very few facilities locally that are open. Some of the ones that are open are charging 40 cents on the dollar so you can get quarters, so you can use their machines. There's gonna be a law against that somewhere, you know? And so Tide comes in and does it for free. Bring your equipment, smiling faces, happy people, you know, and they're doing such a great service to this area. It's just phenomenal. When you come down the road, you can't help but notice it. It's something that people need. It's the little things that you don't think about. People think of the food, they think of housing, clothing, but no one thinks, okay, how are you gonna wash your clothes? As the mood over here shifts from survival to rebuilding, you know, some of the, some of the basic needs are being met already today. So food, water, shelter are being met by different by different organizations over here. What Ty came down here to do is really provide them with a little sense of comfort with by giving them clean clothes so that they can then carry on their lives. When Procter & Gamble and Ty said, we'll wash people's clothes, what a wonderful thing to be able to get up and put on some clean clothes you can face the day. A corporation that like that would come here and do this for us? No, yeah, they, they care about the people here. Now I challenge any ad campaign to come up against this. Um, and this Thai truck, just parenthetically speaking, is now in San Diego, uh, taking care of people who have lost their homes in, in the wildfires there. Um, and there's something to be said. I'm not saying every experiential campaign has to be on, on this level of benefit. It could be as simple as a chuckle. Um, but really, I got in this game, and I hope everyone else here got in this game, because we want to make people's lives better um, and, and not take away from it. Um, and I venture to say that in New Orleans and soon to be in San Diego, 
there's not going to be a lot of people who have seen this or experienced this who are going to buy anything but Tide for the rest of their lives because Tide was there to give them that dignity. Um, so any campaign uh, that wants to be called experiential has to give some sort of inherent benefit to the consumer, physically, emotionally, mentally, viscerally. There has to be something there. Um, otherwise, it's just part of the clutter. 